All right, I don't have a beard to put it on, so you know, if it doesn't doesn't come come through very well, won't be able to clip it up there. Uh, yeah. So my name is Jamin Holmgren. Um, I am uh, the owner of Clearside Studio across the street or across the river, actually, uh, in Vancouver, Washington. Um, we do iOS, Android, Rails, um, Middleman, lots of Ruby over there. Um, you can find me on Twitter, Jamin Holmgren, and GitHub as well. Um, so this talk is going to be about uh, Ruby Motion, but more specifically about a gem that I made uh, with the help of some of my guys at, uh, at ClearSight, and uh, uh, hopefully you'll get a little something out of it. Um, maybe some of you have heard of uh, Pro Motion before. Ruby Motion, I know, has been around for about almost three years now. Uh, I think it was started in. 2012, uh, Laurent Sansonetti was uh, an Apple developer. In uh, he was working on Mac Ruby, and he he quit Apple, started working on Ruby Motion, and uh, came out with it in the spring of 2012. We uh, we were fairly early adopters. Uh, that summer, we started working on an, an app for a client. We do client work, and uh, and so we've been doing Ruby Motion ever since, and, and it's been a lot of fun. So what is uh, Ruby Motion? Um, so it's Ruby on iOS and now Android just came out you know, a couple months ago. Uh, it, you can, so you can write your normal Ruby. There's a few limitations with Ruby Motion, uh, just based on the, the fact that it is an ahead of time compiled uh, implementation of Ruby. Um, you have a command line interface workflow, so you can use rake. Uh, you know, just the normal way that you would use Rake. Uh, you can use the REPL, so you can interact with your apps, actually go in there, and this is one of the cool things I'm actually gonna show you in my demo today, how you can interact with the elements on, on the simulator uh, when you're developing your, your apps. Um, you can bring your own editor, and that's, that's one of the coolest things. Uh, for those of you guys who like Vim, uh, if you like, there you go. Uh, if you like uh, Sublime, um, you know, a few other editors out there, maybe Notepad. Well, that's my favorite. Woo! Yeah, using that. So it's statically compiled. It calls into the Objective C runtime, which means you don't you don't have a performance penalty. It's not an interpreted interpreted uh, language. It's actually compiled into uh, you know a binary source, uh, which is really cool because you've never seen Ruby like Ruby Motion. It's really fast, really fast. Uh, if you ever want to put it head-to-head -head against MRI or uh, JRuby, um, it, it's, it's pretty impressive. Um, this, the main reason, though, that we got into Ruby Motion was because of this XKCD. Uh, you can actually compile, so you have an excuse to be saying, hey, boss, so my code's compiled. <laughs> um, so that's what Ruby Motion is. So why would you use it? Uh, because you can certainly use Objective C with with Xcode. You can use now Swift. Um, it, Objective C is very verbose. Uh, I'll show you a little bit of that. I'm not going to go too far into what Objective C looks like. Uh, Swift is Apple only, at least so far. Um, probably going to only be Apple only, as far as we can tell. Uh, Java is Java. I mean, <laughs> nothing against Java, but uh, it's not Ruby. I, you know, everybody here loves Ruby. Uh, excellent ecosystem. There's a lot of gems. <clears throat> to be clear, Ruby Motion uh, does not, you can't use regular gems with Ruby Motion. You have to use Ruby Motion gems. Um, there are some, some workarounds where you can pull in certain gems and run them in Ruby Motion you know, runtime, but it's, it's just not, it's not something that you find yourself doing a lot. The one thing you can do, though, is you can run CocoaPods. CocoaPods, for those of you don't, who don't know, are uh, Objective-C uh, libraries that you can, almost like Bundler, you can pull them into your, into your project and, and use them. Uh, it's really cool because you have Ruby gems and you have uh, CocoaPods uh, interacting together in your application. Um, the community is great. It's very welcoming, uh, just like any Ruby community. Very welcoming. Uh, people are very happy to help out. A lot of open source going on and uh, a lot of help. Hipbyte is the the, the, create, the company behind Ruby Motion, and they've been great to work with. Uh, we, of course, uh, you know, because we're doing client work, we're dealing with a lot of maybe edge cases that come up. Uh, they've been great to respond back and, and give us uh, good feedback and, and help uh, working through the issues. 
Um, another reason why to use Ruby Motion uh, in your in your client shop or in your application that you're building is happy developers. As you know, Ruby is is built for programmer happiness. Um, Swift is is pretty nice and it's really cool, but uh, I really enjoy Ruby. So, um, so promotion. Promotion is the very poorly named gem that I created. <laughs> You have to say Ruby Motion Pro Motion because you're not going to find it on Google. Um, when I first started building iOS apps, the boilerplate got to me. So this, I'm actually going to skip down to this here. Navigate. So this is what if you want. If you have a screen on on, on the screen and you want to slide another one in front of it, you, maybe you have iPhones and you've done that before. Tap a button, something slides on. This is what you do in the normal Cocoa Touch API. It's navigation controller dot push view controller colon my view controller dot alloc dot init with nib name nil comma bundle colon nil comma animated colon true. That's how you push a new screen on on the screen. Um, I didn't really like that. I came from Rails and. Uh, there's a lot of really nice DSLs that I use, RSpec and things like that. Uh, so I built uh, this gem, and you just write, open my screen. And it just does all that setup for you and pulls it on, kind of is aware of the context that you're, that you're calling it in, and uh, allows you to get started very quickly. You don't have to look it up. You know how to, you know how to write it. It's, it's built to be memorable. It's built to be simple uh, and actually kind of fun to use. Uh, you can very quickly see on your screen what's what's happening. Whereas if you were to go into even a Ruby Motion app that's built using the regular Cocoa Touch APIs, it's a wall of it's a wall of code. Uh, so it reduces a lot of boilerplate. That's what ProMotion does, and it really is centered around the screens. And you can really think of screens as controllers. Um, they they represent generally one screen. You're not going to have like Rails. You'd have multiple actions per controller. That's not really the case uh, in, in an iPhone app. Uh, you're going to have one controller per screen. And that's what a ProMotion screen is. Now, under the hood, it's a subclass of a UI view controller. So Apple has this little bit different purpose for a view controller. They want it to instantiate all the views and set them all up and put the right colors in there and, and handle all the touches, touch events, and then send off uh, you know, information to the database. They're doing a lot of things in, in these view controllers. I wanted to simplify the concept down to just screens and then move the styling out of there and the storage out of there and start separating the concerns out. We've kind of come to a really good place with our stack. Uh, we're able to build iPhone apps now uh, where you kind of know where things are going to be. And, and that's a great place to be because when we first started, it felt like you were putting everything into your view controller. So our stack at ClearSight, of course, we use ProMotion uh, for screens slash controllers. Um, so that, that kind of underlies the whole thing. Um, I'm also a, a, a co-founder, a co-creator, I should say, of, uh, of Motion Kit uh, for UI layout and styling. There's another uh, gem out there called RMQ by uh, Todd Worth at Infinite Red down in San Francisco. It's a great system as well. Uh, we use it as well. Uh, it kind of depends on the, the system because for the app because it's, it's two different systems. Motion Kit uses what is called auto layout in the iOS community. Auto layout is basically where you define a certain number of constraints, like this this view has to be to the right plus five points uh, of this other view, and then it kind of figures out how to lay everything out. It's almost like, in some ways, the document flow in the web, uh, but it's a it's a whole different concept. Um, it's it's interesting to use, uh, but it's not all that user friendly. So Motion Kit turns that into a nice DSL. RMQ is a little more um, direct. Uh, I need to put this right there, and that's where it goes. Uh, it's, it's more like jQuery. Uh, that's how it was modeled after. Um, data modeling and storage, we use core data, uh, which of course is, it comes with uh, Cocoa Touch. Uh, core data is really interesting because it's a lot of in-memory stuff, but it also persists. And uh, we use CDQ, which is uh, Ken Miller, he built that. It's, it's, it's great. It, it makes it feel a little bit more like active record uh, if you use that. Uh, Parse, we use parse.com, which is a Facebook product um, that works quite well. Uh, Parsistence is our, our gem, actually, uh, that, we've, that we built. 
for interacting with parse. That's nice for cloud code. If you just want to build an app, you don't want to have to worry about building the API in the background, uh, use something like parse. Um, or you can build your own Rails API, and then we use something called AF Motion, which underneath it, there's another CocoaPod uh, called AF Net Networking. So that's a lot of different names there, um, but uh, this is kind of, kind of our stack. Uh, but we also have helpers. Um, so when, when you're writing iPhone apps, uh, you find that you are constantly writing out very long things. So an example would be, let's say you want to send a request to uh, an API, and you have a URL. In order to do that, you have to turn your string, you know, HTTP colon slash slash google.com, you have to turn that into an NS URL. So a string is, under the hood is an NS string. That's a Cocoa Touch object. Uh, the NS URL is a separate object. So you have to say NS URL dot URL with string and then pass in your string. It's just not, it's just not a very good experience. So what, uh, what Sugarcube will do, and RMQ as well, in two different ways, uh, is Sugarcube, for example, you just put your string out there with your URL dot NS URL and it turns it into a URL. Um, there's other ones out there that would have dot to URL, which kind of feels a little more active support level. Um, at the bottom here, I've, I've listed Red Potion. It's something relatively recent. Uh, it's an opinionated stack uh, by the guys at uh, Infinite Red. And uh, that uses RMQ, ProMotion, CDQ, and a couple other jams and kind of binds them together in an opinionated, opinionated way uh, and says, this is the right way to build an app. Um, we, uh, we do plan to use Red Potion uh, on, on a future app to kind of see how it goes. Uh, we, we currently have a little different stack because we're using MotionKit and, and SugarCube, but uh, RMQ is great, and that's essentially replacing the MotionKit SugarCube part of things. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to show you a quick demo. Actually, I'm not sure how quick it'll be, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a little more about what, what it's like to build a ProMotion app. So I'm assuming that most of you are brand new to RubyMotion. Bear with me if you've used it before or you're an old hand. Um, but this might be a little interesting. Oh, is that not showing up? Let me mirror here. There we go. I'll make it a little bigger. <clears throat> okay, so just like any gem, you can install uh, ProMotion using Ruby gems. Uh, Jim install, thank you. Um, so there you go, uh, ProMotion 2.2.1. Uh, sort of like Rails, Rails new, this is ProMotion new. I'm just going to call it demo. So create a uh, very basic app here. I'm going to see the end to it and open up Sublime. <clears throat> and show you a little bit of it. I'm sorry it's so small there. Can I make that sidebar bigger? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> All day. No. All day. <laughs> 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 All right. So <clears throat> the uh, well, I'll, I'll at least be able to show you the code. I can make that bigger. And all, that. all right. So yeah. this is an app delegate. App delegate is the entry point to an iPhone app, uh, iPhone app, as well as iPad app. Um, this is what promotion gives you. So normally you would have something that looks like this. I'll just Put it in there. Okay. Application, application did finish launching with options. <laughs> options. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't fit. Um, that's the same thing as our onload. Uh, so obviously, I, I took one look at that and said, I can I can write a method that forwards to you know this other method. Um, there's a few other little things that we do for setup uh, during this. I'm actually going to just delete that. That's for testing. We don't need to test. Um, <laughs> on load, <clears throat> we also have a status bar. So the status bar at the top of the iPhone app, uh, you can turn it on and off. You can tell it to use, a, you know, for example, a fade uh, animation or just no animation whatsoever when you open up the app. Um, First thing you'll notice is that we're opening a home screen. That's all we're doing. We're just we're not doing any other static. We're just saying we want to open a home screen and pull it onto the, onto, onto the screen and give it a navigation bar. So bar at the top with the title, that sort of thing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull open that screen just so you can take a look at it. It's very straightforward. Okay, back up a little bit. All right, so this is a promotion screen. Uh, you give it a title. 
we've, get, we've given you some a little nice DSL there uh, to set a title. And again, the onload. Uh, so when the view has been loaded, it's ready to go. You have a view sitting there, it's just blank though. Uh, now we can start adding things to it before it's displayed. There are other hooks for when it's going to be displayed. For example, we can add uh, def will appear and do something in there when it's about to, it's all set up, but it's not ready to slide onto the screen. Um, there's an on up here, which is after it's not animated, that sort of thing. Um, what I'm doing here is setting a nav bar button uh, at the top uh, on the right hand side, uh, giving it a, a title of help and telling it that when you tap that, let's, let's call the show help method. Uh, so that's at the bottom here, and again, we have this open, very simple, open help screen. This, these are things that if, you, if you've looked at uh, iPhone apps in the past, uh, this is a lot smaller. <clears throat> so let's just run this and see see what see how badly it blows up. <laughs> so you can see here that it's compiling. Um, it's running through all these gem, the, the gem files, and it's actually compiling these and getting ready to link them in statically into the, the binary. What's cool is that you can also compile in Objective C. So if you want to write Objective C, and they'll get just like the other ones, uh, if you prefer writing, or if there's some workaround that's a little bit easier if you have to do it in Objective-C. We pretty much never have to do that. ProMotion is, I'm sorry, RubyMotion is, uh, is quite powerful and, and feature-rich. Okay, so here is, let's see if I can do it the right size, just a blank black screen with a bar at the top that says Home and that Help button that we, that we added. When I click the Help button, it opens the Help screen. This is a this is a table screen, so that's a little more uh, a little more to it. Now, normally in a, a Cocoa Touch uh, table screen, you have to provide a bunch of uh, an interface. You have to provide a bunch of methods that return values for how many sections do I have? So you can see here, I have an about section and then a help section. Those are actually section titles. I don't know if you can tell. Um, and then within each section, it asks, okay, for section zero. How many cells do I have? And you have to then go into your data source, wherever it is, and respond back with how many. I've got two. And then it says, for this section and this row, I need the cell, because I'm going to display it. And you actually have to instantiate a view and give it to it, and then it puts it on the screen. And there's a few other things that happen there, too. Uh, for example, when you have a, when you're scrolling uh, a very long list, um, it doesn't just have this massive list that extends up and down. It dequeues, or it queues up, it takes uh, uh, the cell at the very top as you're scrolling down and puts it at the bottom and gives you an opportunity to reconfigure it so that when it comes by again, it's a different cell. That's kind of interesting. Uh, it's for performance reasons, of course. We take care of that for you. So if I go into this help screen, there you go. That's all it is. It's an array of hashes. The first, the first set of hashes is your, are your sections, so the title is about. Uh, down here you can see there's a title of help. In fact, I'm going to go down here and say, help me, please. There are too many people in here. <laughs> and I'm going to kill it. You do a lot of control C, up enter when you're doing Ruby motion because you're just running rake all the time. Now you notice it didn't have to recompile everything. All it recompiled was that one screen that I changed. That's it. And then it pulled everything back together. So I go back here and hit help, <clears throat> and yeah, <laughs> went off the <clears throat> Now, one thing I didn't show you there uh, was you can provide a, for each cell, it's, a, it's in right hashes again, uh, you can provide a title, an action, and actually a whole bunch of more uh, just properties of you know, height and, and various properties of, of how to configure the cell before it appears on the screen. You can also pass in arbitrary things like just random properties that you set using uh, an accessor, for example. Um, so this action, the about action, if I go down here, I've got a logger here, and all I'm saying is log and info, saying I tapped about, tap more about, tap help. So if I jump back into my simulator here and tap, 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 there you go, three, three of them there. Um, four, there. So it's very simple, it just hooks into that and you can do something else, like open another screen or something like that. So let's go back to this home screen here. <clears throat> there it is. Um, 
in this onload, we want to we want to do something. This black background's not working for us, so let's go ahead and set some attributes. Um, set attributes is uh, just a helper method that we provide in there. We can pass in a hash, and it'll just apply a bunch of properties to a, to an object. I could very easily do something like so. The, the object we're working on is actually self.view. It's an access or a property that comes with every screen, also every view controller. It's a Cocoa Touch method. Um, and it's already set up, it's already the right size, but it's just blank, it's black. And so we could say like background color equals, and this is how you do colors. Yeah. White color dot white color. There are helpers for that. I don't have them on this app right now, so let's just see what that does. <clears throat> Again, it compiles just the home screen, links it together and fires it up. Hey, we've got a white screen, cool. Um, but let's say we want to use the, we, we have a few more uh, attributes to do. Uh, we just say self.view and comma, pass in a hash, background. And in this case, we can just use our favorite snake case, because we are Ruby. <laughs> and that should do it. Um, so that will apply the white color to the background. Boom, still works, cool. Uh, now we want to add a label, and we want it to have an orange background, let's say. So um, we'll add, so the, 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 the method add will take the view and add a sub-view to it. So we have our main view, and it will just add a sub-view to, uh, to that main view. <clears throat> you can really think of a view, which is a UI view, as essentially like a div. It's, it's just, there's, it's a container, you can apply some various properties to it, you can't put text in it though. Um, but you can, you can do things like, Add other subviews to it and constrain it and put it in various places. Um, so let's let's add a UI view actually, and I'm just going to call dot new. And just like the set attributes method, we can pass in a hash and set the background color. So I'm going to do that. So does that have default placement of that div? It does not. That was going to be my next line. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Uh, the default placement actually is. Uh, is zero, 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 so you okay. get this nothing. Um, so you pass in, and there's a couple different ways to do this, but RubyMotion provides a nice little helper where you can just pass in an array of two arrays that has the origin and the size. So you have an X, a Y, a width, and a height. So we're just gonna say 20, 100, and these are points, of course. Uh, if you're on an iPhone 6 Plus, it's gonna be three pixels to a point if you're on Something smaller is going to be two. Uh, very old, it's going to be one. Uh, let's say 300 points and 50 points as the frame. Let's just look at that, see what it, oops. See what it gives us. <clears throat> this is one of the downsides, is there's a little bit less of a feedback loop here. Okay, so this view runs off the side of the screen because it's only 320 pixels wide. Um, I should have done 280, but let's say that I, just want to see what it looks like. So this is one of the coolest things about Ruby Motion. You can hold down Command and click, and over on your REPL, you're actually inside the instance. It's sort of like Cry. Uh, you can jump right into the instance. So I can type in frame here, and I've got an ac I've got access to the frame right there. Gives you a uh, CG rect, which is a CG point and a CG size. Of course, we did with the arrays. <clears throat> so we want to set that frame different. Self dot frame equals uh, what was it 280. 100, and then, um, I'm sorry, this should have been 20, 100, and 280, 50. And boom, it just changed right in live in your, in your simulator. So that's pretty cool. You can just copy that, oops, and, uh, and drop it in as your frame. How the hell did they do that? What's that? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> it's pretty awesome though. We use this all the time for debugging. Going in there and, well, you guys know, if you, if you run into your, your Rails console, you can do a lot of th cool things, but this allows you to actually manipulate right on the screen. That's one of the coolest things about iOS, well, really mobile development in general, is that you don't have this disconnect between the server and the, uh, and the browser. We have all of these solutions, and we're, we're web developers. There's all these solutions to try to connect things up in a more cohesive way. React, for example, is something we're really looking into um, at ClearSight. Uh, and it's really cool, but we don't have to deal with that here. It's, it's literally just an, an object, and we can just set something different on it, and it moves. Um, so 
that's cool, but let's uh, let's add another let's add an actual UI label to uh, to the screen. Um, and I want to set the text to um, let's say Ruby Brigade here. And the frame is going to be um, let's try 25, 105. So we're going to kind of fit it inside of that other one. Uh, oops. And this would be 270. So I'm getting a little padding. I'm pulling the, the UI label. A UI label is basically just you can put some text in there. Um, 40. Now there's the frame, and I want the color to be white. There we go. Control C, up, enter. Again, you're very good at that. They are working on auto reload. Uh, so um, basically, as you save the file, it's going to not reload the app. It'll recompile, patch the, the code in somehow. I don't know how. And, uh, and then run a method on your controller where you can go in there and do a reset with the new code, which is cool. It's, it just calls the method and says, I need to reset up this view so you can blow away your view and reset it up. So you can see it in real time as you're saving and it's, it's instant. They at Inspect uh, last year, uh, which is their conference down in San Francisco, uh, they showed uh, a demo of this working. Uh, and I asked about it and they're still working on it. There's some bugs uh, that, that are kind of annoying that they're working through, um, but they're getting there. Um, so I want this to be centered, for example. I promise I won't keep doing this. So text alignment. <clears throat> And how do you know all these properties? Well, <laughs> you're going to have to dig through Apple documentation. That's going to be the case. Uh, all of them are just properties on this element, a UI label. So you can go to the UI label docs on Apple and, uh, and just look up what properties are available and just put them right in there, of course, with underscores. Um, so this is, this is uh, without having my helpers, I actually have to write this out. So UI text alignment. Center. That's how you set a center. Um, it would be better if we could just say <laughs> this, right? And there are DSLs that let you do that. <clears throat> so you can see that uh, building a view is, I mean, you guys can do this. It's, it's very straightforward. You're just setting properties and it's moving it and setting it in place. Um, but what we use is Motion Kit. And so Motion Kit provides uh, almost like and I'm going to show you guys a little bit of a, uh, an application, actually, that was written, not by me, um, but uh, that incorporates all of these gems in a really cool way. Um, in fact, I'm going to go do that right now, show you exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, Motion Kit is, uh, is great for views. So I was looking to try to find an open source app that would show how to use Motion Kit and ProMotion together and that sort of thing. I've got a few demos out there. And I actually stumbled across this, which is Calligator iOS. It's written in Ruby Motion using ProMotion. That's cool to see. And um, it, uh, it uses ProMotion. It uses Motion Kit. Um, I don't know if the guy who wrote it is here, but very nice job. It was it's mine. Really? really? Yeah. Seriously. That's pretty awesome. Very well done. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> this is uh, this is a full app, of course. You can go uh, find it on on uh, GitHub, GitHub, of course. Um, as you as you can see, it's using the same stuff that we were doing before. It's using a menu uh, controller here, which is um, ProMotion menu drawer. Uh, this is an add-on gem. There's a lot of add-on gems for ProMotion that give you extra functionality. And that pulls that in. Uh, he's doing some setup before he uh, before he opens it, but he opens the the menu drawer, and uh, he's got a few other things going on here. This is just the app delegates, very, very tight, very small. Um, this, this app works great. I actually uh, built it, and, uh, and it works fine. It showed all the events uh, you know, that are coming up for, for this event. Um, so here are some screens. Uh, there's an about screen. Uh, it has very, very short. Uh, screen. Most of our screens end up being very short because Motion Kit takes away all of the, uh, and actually he's using RMQ here as well, but Motion Kit or RMQ take away all of the view setup, so you're not having to put all that in there. And then you can do some different storage solutions, uh, so you can just pass messages back to your storage, 
basically your controllers, your screens are just passing um, events back and forth and then triggering new screens to pop on the screen. It's very cool. Um, so we're letting that uh, compile there and simulate on my other screen. <clears throat> Network is lost. Okay, so it doesn't want to connect right now, but, oh, hey. <laughs> Portland Startup Week. There we go. So you can see this is built uh, using Pro ProMotion and, and MotionKit. Um, so it'll be in the App Store. It will be in the App Store? Hopefully, yeah. Awesome. We'll get that. Is there a DSL for getting things in the App Store? Write <laughs> <laughs> that. That would be awesome. <laughs> that would be. I'm for that. <laughs> I just submitted an app uh, yesterday to the App Store, um, and it is never a fun process. <laughs> um, so various screens. Uh, oh, yeah. So here is a layout. So if you think of this as essentially almost like markup in a way. Uh, it's telling the app where and what structure, uh, how, how to build your div, so to speak, and your, your links, so to speak, uh, your UI views, your UI labels, um, buttons, uh, different things like that. And, and you, can, you can either do what he's done here with the uh, uh, setting the title right in, in line there, or you can set uh, a symbol, which is almost like a class, and that inherits from either another, uh, like a module or a method. It, you can go read the documentation, it's, it's pretty nice. Um, but it's very clean, and then uh, there's an add-on gem for Motion Kit called Motion Kit Events that allows you to bind to events, pass those back to your screen, and everything stays nice and separated, very, uh, very clean. So this is just kind of a, a quick uh, primer demo of, of what, uh, what RubyMotion and ProMotion and the gems that are out there. The ecosystem is becoming a little more mature now, now that it's almost three years old. When it first came out, there were a few gems that came out like, like Bubble Wrap and Sugar Cube and Teacup. Uh, some of those have been Sunset. Teacup was Sunset in favor of Motion, uh, motion Kit. And, uh, and some others have sprung up in its place like uh, RMQ. So the ecosystem is becoming more mature and there's more of a kind of a best practice is starting to happen uh, that you can start following along with. And, and uh, when you build your apps, you're not feeling like you're either following in some iOS developer's footsteps, which you don't want to do, uh, but you actually feel like you have something that's kind of well laid out in front of you. And then there's plenty of room to innovate as well. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, let me know. All right, thank you very much.